In this video, we're going to focus on logic gates that are built using transistors. We're going to talk about the AND gate, the NAND gate, the OR, and the NOR gate. So let's start with a circuit. So here we have an NPN transistor. This is the base, the collector, and the emitter. Now I'm going to connect it in series with another NPN transistor. We're going to have a resistor at the collector of the first one. This is going to be the output. And the second one will be connected to ground. And this is going to be positive 5V. So we'll call the first one input A, the second one input B. Now, what type of logic gate do we have here? Would you say it's an AND gate, a NAND gate, an OR, or a NOR gate? Now, whenever you have, whoops, let's undo that. Whenever you have two transistors in series with each other, you're dealing with either an AND or a NAND gate. When they're parallel to each other, you're dealing with an OR or NOR gate. So is this AND or NAND? What would you say? Well, let's build a table, and then we'll talk about it. What will be the voltage of the output if both inputs are off? On is 1, off is 0. So if input A and input B, if they're off, what will be the voltage at the output? There's two choices, either it's five volts or it's zero volts. So if A is off, no current will flow through the collector to the emitter. If no current flows there and no current is really flowing through the output, let's say if we connect it to a multimeter that measures the voltage, barely any current, a very, very tiny current will go to the multimeter. So we could say that it's negligible. Therefore, if no current is flowing through the resistor, there's no voltage drop across that resistor. So the output will be five volts. Therefore, we can assign a one to the output. We could say that it's on, it's active. It has a voltage of five. Now, what if we turn the first transistor on, but we turn off the second transistor. So we're applying a voltage at the input of the first transistor, but no voltage at input B. What will be the voltage at the output? So right now, A is on, so we have a one there, B is off. If A is on, current can flow through the collector to the emitter. Now B is off, so current will not be able to flow from the collector to the emitter. Therefore, if current can flow through A but not to B, the current is not going to flow through ground, which means that there's no current flowing through the resistor. So there's no voltage drop at that resistor, so the output will be 5. If the output is 5, then we could put a 1 here. The same is true if we turn off A and turn on B. The output will still be the same. Now, what if we turn on both transistors? Let's say we apply a voltage at the input of A and B. What's going to happen? Well, because both of them are on, current is going to flow through the resistor through transistor 1 and through transistor 2. Now notice when these two transistors are on, what we have is the equivalent of a wire that connects directly from the ground to the output. If the voltage here is 0, then the voltage here will be 0. So the voltage drop across the resistor is now 5 volts. So once these two transistors are on, when they begin to conduct, 
basically we have a direct line from ground to output which means the output now has a voltage of zero so is this an AND gate or a NAND gate to have an AND gate you only get an output of one if both A and B are on the NAND gate is the opposite of that if both A and B are on you get an output of zero so what we have here is the NAND gate and here is the symbol for the NAND gate so this is A this is B and we have A times B with a complement outside of that so let's say if A and B are 0 let's use the formula to get the output this would be 0 times 0 which is 0 and the complement of 0 is 1 so we get this now let's say if A is 1 and B is 0 this will be 1 times 0 which is 0 the complement of 0 is 1 so we get that answer and let's do the last row where both A and B are, are on 1 times 1 is 1 the complement of 1 is 0 so we get this output so you can use the formula to complete the truth table now let's change the circuit instead of having the resistor at the positive voltage let's put the resistor between the emitter of the second transistor and ground and we're going to put the output here so now what type of circuit do we have this is going to change from the NAND circuit to the AND circuit let's see what happens if A and B are off so if this is off and this is off current will not flow through these resistors and there's no current flowing through this resistor so the voltage drop is zero so the voltage at ground is zero and the voltage above that resistor will be zero since there's no current flowing through it therefore the output will be zero now if we turn on A and leave B off this is one this is zero current can flow through here but it can't flow through the second transistor therefore no current is flowing through this resistor so there's no voltage drop therefore these two will be the same so this is going to be zero and if we reverse it if we turn B on turn A off there's no current flowing through the first transistor so there's no current flowing through this resistor which means its output will be equivalent to that of ground it's going to be zero the only way the output is going to change is if both transistors are active now we have current flowing through both transistors we also have current flowing through the other resistor so there's going to be a voltage drop across that but now when the two transistors are on what we have is basically a direct wire to the output so if this is 5 volts this will be 5 volts so the output will be 1 it's going to be active so we have an AND logic gate when A and B are on the output is active so here is the symbol for the AND gate it's very similar to the NAND gate it just doesn't have the circle at the output so the output is simply A times B 0 times 0 is 0 1 times 0 is 0 
0 times 1 is 0, but 1 times 1 is 1. So remember, we're dealing with not regular algebra, but Boolean algebra. Now, let's focus on the other two logic gates. So let's begin by drawing a circuit. This time, the two transistors, they're going to be connected in parallel with each other as opposed to connecting them in series. I'm going to put a resistor between ground and the emitters of the two transistors. And let's use the same voltage source. So this is input A input B. So what type of logic gate do we have here? We know that because they're connected in parallel, it has to be either OR or NOR. Which one is it? Oh, first, we need to define the location of the output. Let's say the output is defined to be at the emitters of the two transistors. So with that information, what type of logic gate do we have, OR or NOR? Well, let's analyze it. So let's apply a voltage that's high enough to activate both transistors. What will be the voltage at the output? So we're going to put a 1 at both of the inputs. So current is going to flow from the collector to the emitter of the transistor. And so this becomes like a straight wire. Thus, whatever voltage we have here will be the same as the output voltage, which means it's going to be at 5 volts. So we have a 1 at the output. Now, if we turn off the second transistor, so we have a 1 on A, a 0 on B, current will still flow through the first transistor. Therefore, we have a direct connection between the voltage source and the output, so it's going to be at 5. Therefore, if any one of the two transistors is activated, the output is going to be 1. So if we turn on transistor B and turn off the first transistor, the output will still be the same. But now what happens if we activate if we turn off both transistors. I was going to say activate both transistors, but we already have that. So if we turn off both transistors, what's going to happen? Well, there's not going to be any current flow between the two transistors, which means there's going to be no current flowing through this resistor, so there's no voltage drop. So the voltage across that resistor will be the same. Therefore, the output will be off. It will be at zero volts. So what type of logic gate do we have here? Notice that the output is active if A or B is active. So what we have here is the OR logic gate. If A or B is on, the output will be on. So we can draw the symbol like this. So here's A, here's B, and the output is simply A plus B. So if we were to use the formula to get the output, 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. So we get that answer. If we add 0 and 1, or 1 and 0, we're going to get 1. In regular math, 1 plus 1 is 2, but when dealing with Boolean algebra, 1 plus 1 is 1. I think of it as on plus on is still on. So this is the one thing that may confuse you when dealing with Boolean algebra. Now, how can we design the NOR gate? To draw the circuit for the NOR gate, move the resistor and the output to the voltage source. 
So that is going to remain the ground connection. And we're going to put a resistor between the collectors of the two transistors and the voltage source. And the output will now be at the collector instead of at the emitters of the two transistors. Let's go ahead and make a truth table. So let's see what happens if both transistors are off. Well, we know that there's going to be no current flow between any of the two transistors, which means there's no current flow across that resistor. So the voltage across it will be the same. There's no voltage drop. The output will be 5. So we're going to have a 1 at the output. Now let's turn one of the two transistors on. Let's activate transistor A. So we have a 1 and a 0. Once any one of the transistors are activated, there's going to be a current flow through that transistor, which means we have a, a direct connection between the output and the ground. So these two will be at the same voltage. And there's going to be a voltage drop of approximately 5 volts across that resistor. Of course, there might be a small voltage drop of like 0.2 or 0.3 volts between the emitter and the collector. And so you subtract that by 5 and the actual voltage drop might be 4.7 or 4.8 across that resistor. But if we treat it as an ideal transistor where the voltage drop between the collector and the emitter is zero, then the voltage drop across the resistor will be five. But none of these devices are actually ideal in reality. So there's going to be some voltage drop across that transistor. But the important thing to know is that once this transistor is on, the output goes to zero. You have a direct connection between the ground and the output. So this is now off. If we deactivate the first transistor and turn off the second one, I mean turn on the second one rather, we will still have a direct connection between the output and ground. So this will be off. And if we activate both of them, it will remain, the output will remain inactive. It will be at zero volts. So this is the NOR gate. If A or B is activated, the output will be zero. So notice the difference between the OR and the NOR gate. For the OR gate, if A or B is on, the output is on. For the NOR gate, if A or B is on, the output is off. So here is the symbol for the NOR gate. We got the circle at the output. And the formula is the same as a NOR gate. The only difference is we just need to put the complement attached to it. So using that formula, we have 0 plus 0, complement of that. This gives us 0 plus 0 is 0, and the complement of 0 is 1. That gives us this output. For the second row, we have 1 plus 0, which is 1. Complement of 1 is 0. We get this answer. For the last row, we have 1 plus 1. For Boolean algebra, we know that 1 plus 1 is 1. Complement of 1 is 0. So that concludes this video tutorial. So now you understand how you can make a logic gate using two transistors. You know how to build the AND, the NAND, the OR and the NOR gate. Thanks for watching.